like the idea that that uh, you can connect to a person and it raises everything to another level and if you can find it so it's team it's building a team I talk about that a lot but you got to have the right team to make anything happen uh, but if you can look across the room and somebody gets what you're about to say or knows where yeah. you're going, it sounds I mean, really mystical. Level. I'm not really sure. I think Pinker would say, "Well, you have these shared experiences, and you've developed a uh, uh, a almost nonverbal communication style." I think that's what uh, uh, Pinker and some of the neuro- neuroscientists would say. Well, I don't know if I buy that. Well, let's t- let's take a take a minute here. Now, here's what I'm pulling out today. Yeah. We're on the web right yeah. now, and this is a little article uh, that shows. There's the up, man. There's the man himself. There, you mentioned Pinker, so we brought him in for you today. So yeah, can we get him on the screen? I would love to have him. Uh, he come looks in. like a young rock star. There, he is awesome. Yeah. Pinker, the the ultra scientist. All right, you giving him uh, some props there, but. Listen, let me. He wrote this article about the single reason why people can't write. Can't so I write. wanted to mm-hmm. to take a look at that. So let's uh, let's take a look here. It, he says for Pinker, the root cause of so much bad writing is what he calls the curse of knowledge. Uh, he defines this as a difficulty in imagining what it's like for someone else not to know something that you know. The curse of knowledge is the single best explanation I know of why good people write bad prose. So, so I'm not I'm not sure I completely understand what he's saying there, but I, I took it to mean that you have so much information available to you now. You and I have talked about this whole yeah. deluge of information and data coming at us. Uh, that 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 incapacitates one in a way because okay where do I start and what do I leave out what do I put in and I'm not sure if that's the reason he's talking about but that's my interpretation what do you think it's a tsunami of information so here comes the tsunami oh look there's a desk floating in it huh what and then you lose your focus right <laughs> so it's maybe that's what he's talking about I don't know yeah. but that's what it's like for me I'm like oh I'm online and oh look at that guitar oh look uh, there's a new ab workout oh how did they learn that what's dance skins I've never heard of that you know well that that's right and that's that's the whole in- internet um, hole that you the rabbit hole and the rabbit trails that you go into the internet it's like anything and by the way let me just say something about these algorithms that pop up all of this information because you clicked on a single item right and in a way, that sets up that tsunami. It may be a small tsunami in a way, but it, it all of a sudden, the ads, the other information, here, you might like this. And, uh, well, that takes you off your task. You just, I'm gone at that point. Now I have to work to say, what, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, I want to go back. I have to do the self-talk to get myself back to that moment. Harari says you have no free will, that the algorithms and AI have taken away your free will. We think we, we have free will and we're making choice, but really all those choices are made for us. And uh, so yeah, I was reading. That, the, oh, by the way, that's a terrible problem. We need to really talk about that. I'm so, not so happy with that. Idea. So I was reading the 20, uh, 21 lessons for the 21st century, and I read completely through it, and I got okay. so uh, so mind blown and depressed that I gave it to Bridget Markwood, my co-author. You know that we're we're. I said, here, read this. You'll like it. And I was like, God, let me. I got to get rid of this yeah, book. Mama. Is what it sounded like. You were, it was overwhelmed, depressing. Well, and the other bit. one's the Pinker book about enlightenment. It's oh, like. Yeah. Oh, how many more graphs do you have? Okay, yeah, I, right. I understand you're the pros king, but really, one more graph? I'm yeah, lost. yeah. I'm well, completely lost now. I think I think he likes this idea of having evidence to back up what he's saying and proof, and it's in a way I think maybe he likes the shock value that comes along with when he says, "Oh, you're thinking this? No, <laughs> think about it in this way." 